think it's time we blow this scene. Get everybody in the stuff together. Okay, three, two, one, let's jam. Taste episode of Woman Interaction Directed Dr. Stone, episode 22, The Treasure. Did did we just get in character development in the way of magma? Honestly, I did not see that coming, but to be honest, I fucking dig it. Now, last we left off, the Kingdom of Science is at a standstill. Working their way through the communications device, they've come across the vacuum tube, and although they can actually create the tube part, the inside filament cannot stand the heat. But alas, some progress has been made in the way of viewing the New Year's sunrise. Yes, sweet, sweet Suika, who has been going through the piles of rocks that Crumb collected, come across an interesting one, and just so happens, utilizing the ultraviolet waves that are produced by the horizon, light up this rock, and it turns out it is the most heat-resistant metal in the world. Yes, tungsten. So it's up to Senku to form a team to spelunk in this cave to find this super rare mineral, and who does he choose for his team? Yes, the other science user, Chrome, as well as the mighty, mighty muscle, Magma. Yes, what a surprise team. But with this selection, we get something very interested in today's episode. We see an evolution in magma, something I was truly shocked at. Now going forward, they make their way to the cave. This thing is epically huge and just as epically dangerous. Yes, it seems for the years of volcanic eruptions, the floor is actually covered in mica, which is a very, very thin, brittle rock. As we see when Senku is telling everyone to stand back, the floor literally begins to crumble under him. And with this, we see magma go into action. Yes, as Chrome perceives it, he is literally pushing Senku into this hole. But as we later find out, and even Senku realizes it, Magma was trying to save Senku. He hears the floor literally break underneath him and tries to push him out of the way. But at this point, it doesn't really matter. They both, after Senku tries to save the giant fucking Magma, even though he is a little tiny twig, Magma's words, not mine, they both fall into this very deep ravine. And this is where we get our first little bit of science factoids. Yes, Chrome utilizing a bottle decides to just start pouring water into this giant ravine hoping that you know Senku and Magma will eventually float to the top you know using their buoyancy and of course this is a smart idea but unfortunately it would just take way too fucking long so at last it's up to Senku to you know teach Chrome the ways of the siphon basically utilizing the pressure caused from the suction as well as gravity turns a tube into a non-mechanical pump which will literally be a life scyther gathering all the water from the nearby pool our second instance of Magma's, you know, character development we see as the two are just floating there bobbing with the water barely halfway up. Magma sees that Senku literally cannot take the cold. And of course, in a very insultish way, basically throws Senku the twig to safety. Now, after both are actually escaped from this ravine, sitting by the fire trying to get nice and toasty, Chrome brings up the worst case scenario. Of course, Magma says, oh, what happens if we both die? No, no, no. In Senku's eye, this is not the worst case scenario. And probably one of the funniest images I've seen in the series so far, we see, you know, the body heat exchange, you know, the worst case scenario is while we were down there, we would have to embrace each other. Magma and Senku, you see this loving embrace and all of a sudden we see Chrome and Senku, these little chibis literally vomiting up rainbow vomit. It's fucking hilarious. Of course, you know, Senku and Magma, the two really, really polar opposites, the meathead versus the twig, the, the smart versus the dumb. Like, it's funny to see that they both agree that this is literally the worst case scenario. But after the rescue is done, they tread on. It's time to find, you know, that elusive tungsten. And of course, they come across this giant striped layered rock and it is just filled and filled with tons of minerals. Yes, years of, you know, of volcanic eruptions seeping through the limestone have created this layered effect, each layer having their own rare mineral. And they were finally able to gather, you know, enough tungsten going forward. Oh, it's just this, this great moment. And it's kind of interrupted by another magma moment. Senku hands in the tool to get these minerals, this pickaxe and magma in quiet contemplation utters the words, I was scared to take you head on for fear of being countered by science weapons. You wouldn't expect me to attack you, you know, while we were digging for this treasure. I was totally gonna murder you. And this is where Senku calls him out. Oh yeah, yeah, you're right. You definitely were gonna fucking kill us even though you saved us back of the hole. Of course, Chrome at this point doesn't understand what the fuck's going on. Like I said before, Senku knew Magma was actually trying to save him. See, at this point, I think we've taken a turn in Magma's character development. Yes, looking back, maybe at one point he was truly evil, but going forward, it looks like now 
now he's just playing the villain, playing the tough guy. I mean, if we look at it from Magma's point of view, he is the number one power in a world where power is fucking everything. He is the strongest, or at least at Ishigami Village, up until this point, and all of a sudden one day, some skinny twig comes out of nowhere, defeats you multiple times, and literally becomes the chief of the village that you've lived in your entire life. He literally stole your dream of becoming the village chief, so of course there's gonna be angst, there's gonna be anger, there's gonna be animosity towards Senku, but seeing what Senku has done, I think Magma has slowly started to change, that maybe this world itself is starting to change, and Magma needs to change with it. Like, although I don't see them being best buddies going forward, and I really do think Magma is striving to be the next village chief, and will try to maybe usurp, at least an honorable way, Senku's position from him, but going forward, I think, at least I feel that there's no, you know, need to overly watch your back around Magma. Two times he could have killed Senku, you know, letting him fall down the hole, and literally bashing their fucking brains with his axe, but I think I I'm agreeing with Senku. I think, you know, Magma is changing, changing for at least the better. So after this interaction, and Senku Chrome are literally just geeking out of all these awesome minerals they see, you know, magnesium, we can make magnesium batteries now, they see a bunch of other minerals. Magma remembers something. Right before they head off, Gen whispered something to him, and it turns out he wants him and Senku to return three days from now. Make sure you have him back by then. Magma literally has to drag Senku and Chrome away from this giant rock. They are literally just geeking out of all these fucking minerals. At least they have accomplished their mission. Now halfway home though, Magma stops, blindfolds Senku, literally picks him up under his fucking arm and literally takes off with him, which is fucking hilarious. Chrome doesn't know what the hell is going on. Now in the next scene, it's one of those moments where have you ever been talking to someone and literally you say something and the instant you say it, it leaves your mouth and you wish you can just take it, grab it and shove it back in. Yeah, this is one of those moments for Senku though. As Senku is tied up, blindfolded and brought to the, you know, the kingdom of science, he hears familiar voices and they're saying, oh, prepare to this. You know, you're not expecting this. Don't, don't try to wiggle your way out of this. I mean, he's basically surrounded by all these familiar voices and he assumes, oh fuck, you guys have figured out if you just hand me over to Shishio, he'll probably spare your village. I mean, I'm the threat here. He's after me. I think he even goes as far as calling me, you bastards. Like, oh shit, shit. Senku, if you knew it was around the corner, you wouldn't have fucking said that. Kohaku in a very sweet way. And I'm glad they picked her to take off the blindfold. Releases him. He opens up his eyes and he sees a telescope. Right? We all know Senku is a fucking space geek. I mean, he, more than e Elon Musk. So while the spelunking buddies were off, you know, trying to get the tungsten, getting get the villagers together, you know, to make a telescope, to make an observatory out of the, you know, once chrome hut for a specific reason. Now, Ganon himself is a very interesting character. We know he is very, you know, cunning and manipulative, but he's very smart too. And he says, this is for your birthday. Senku's like, how the hell do you know it's my birthday? Well, he let off with that interesting question. Like, all you had to do was count the days. I'm, uh, what is it? 6,200 days and some change, blah, blah, blah. It was interesting because Senku's like, well, how do you know when, I mean, when I was revived? He goes, oh, don't you remember? You wrote it down. Remember he actually carved it into the tree when he was first revived. And even before they met, Gen admits that he was fascinated by Senku, this, this, this being that was able to literally stay conscious for 3,700 years counting. Who is this mysterious man? How, how the fuck is this even possible? What, is he even human? He was just memorized by the fact that this person literally came out of petrification and was able to discern, you know, the date. Maybe Gen, the entire time of working with Shishio, his true goal was to make it to the Senku, make it to, you know, this mysterious man and to figure out who the fuck Senku was. And what we saw was him literally make promises and keep them. It seems Gen at this point is truly ride or die. He's in with Senku for the long haul. And it was such a nice heartwarming moment as we see Senku basically flabbergasted. Of course, he says, oh, this will be awesome for, you know, as a watch out base once we take on Shishio. Everyone's like, uh, okay, that's not why we really did that. But deep down inside, he knows that this was a very kind gesture in a very stone world. So, uh, today's episode was fucking amazing. Like I said, we only have two more episodes, episode 23 and episode 24. 24 is going to be our finale and where the hell are they going to leave off? We now have the tungsten. Hopefully we can process that, make the filaments for the vacuum tubes, hopefully get everything together. But where exactly are we going to cut off in the story? Will Senku make a move? Will Shishio make a move? Will we ever get to see Taiju in Yuzuriha again? Will we cut off before spring or the battle fucking commence? I don't know where we're going to cut off, but like, fuck, it's getting harder and harder because I know we only have fewer and fewer episodes going forward. But like I I said, today's episode, I'm so impressed with the evolution in Magma's character. Someone who literally was a villain is now merely pretending to be a villain just to show that he is still, you know, the strong one of the village. He's basically put on a front. He even tells Senku, like, no, you're you're safe as long as you keep me entertained with all this awesome science. He goes, motherfucker, you haven't seen shit yet. Like, I'm about to throw some science bombs on your ass. Figuratively, not literally, because we saw the scene with them embracing that was just fucking cringy as shit. Like I said, this series
series is fucking amazing. I love the science in it. Something so simple as a siphon was is entertaining to me. It was massive. I look it up. I was like, oh, is that really how that works? You know, the suction versus the gravity. Like that's fucking just mesmerizing to me. Not only that, but we get to learn more about you know minerals and chemicals, magnesium, magnesium batteries. How is he gonna fucking do that? Like there's just so much depth and knowledge thrown into these episodes. And yes, it does have its plot holes. So does every fucking series. But all in all. This series is just educationally entertaining. Like, it's fun and you actually can learn stuff. So with all that being said, and me just immensely enjoying this series, I honestly cannot wait for future episodes.